everybody. This is Mumbles, and with me is Nick. Hello, I'm her husband. <laughs> I know, I usually do it the other way. It got confused. So, I was originally going to do a 10 minutes with indies, but I played through this game and realized that it's actually more fun to talk about, and maybe you guys would want to play it after. So, what is the game that we are playing? Neo Cab. And it's the demo, so actually, after you're done with this video, you can go check it out on Steam for free. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> price. Is it for sale, too? It's also for sale, I think. Or is me, it not out check. yet? Hold on a second. So, the game actually comes out on October 3rd, and you can wishlist it until it comes out. Right. And these indie guys love when you wishlist it, because it makes them go up the charts. Yes, even if you have a small amount of interest in an indie game, or if you're like me and you need a system to catalog all the indie games that you want to play <laughs> eventually, please wishlist them on Steam, because that helps them get more exposure on the Steam store page. And also, Steam's getting really good about something's on your wish list is on sale, so it's like 90% off right now. Here's an email, and you're like, oh, I should buy that. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Exactly. And so, having a wish list and putting lots of indie games on it is really, really important, so please try to do that. And then you can buy that game for your friend. <laughs> you see, they want it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's very true. It's so funny to see other. This is so off topic, but it's so funny to see other people's wish lists because um, while I was doing my Portal Two video, I saw I had I had friended some people that had Portal Two on their wish list. They had never played it. Whoa! I know. Hopefully, they saw your video and wanted to. I hope so. Okay, so anyway, tell me a little bit about this game. All right, you are. Was it the last human cab driver in the city overrun by a huge conglomerate? Maybe not last, but definitely it's a rare sight. So I think what it is is that she was a cab driver in kind of a smaller town, and she needed to move out of that town just either because she got bored or it just wasn't working out for her. And so she agreed to move in with her roommate who lives in a more populated town where she'll get more work. The only issue is that she's the only human cab driver there. Mm -hmm. So it's just in the city. It's not like the entire Earth. Everything else is... Uh, the biggest building in the city is owned by Capra, which is this huge corporation that controls everything and owns all the cabs. Yeah. So it's kind of like Google owns cities that they just provide free internet to, basically, right. at this point. But this one... Uh, controls all the public transportation. And it is similar of what Google wanted to do because they are trying to do automated cars. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that everybody would drive a Google car. So it's actually not that far off from reality, which is what makes cyberpunk really interesting. And it's uh, just set, I don't know, what, what would you say, like 50 years in the future-ish? Oh, judging by the dialect in this game, I would say more like 2025. Hmm. Because a lot of, and I don't know if this was intentional, but a lot of the ways that people talk in this, they have kind of um, modern jargon. Yeah. So they'll say stuff like, or like, I've been dating this guy for a minute. That's mm -hmm. a very like modern 2019 thing to say. Yep. I, actually, I would say it's even a little outdated. Already. <laughs> so yeah. it, there's no indication that there's new jargon and dialect, which makes me think it's not super far in the future, because mm -hmm. one of the great things about cyberpunk is a lot of the authors are like, well, we're going to make our own jargon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? Sometimes they went too far. <laughs> right. Like, this exactly. is hard to read. <laughs> Where's my glossary? <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I meant to play this game for 10 minutes with indies, but the issue that I had was that there it's not voice acted, which is totally fine if you are playing it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like a video, it's really, I don't like videos like that. And so I didn't want to put one on my channel of right. me just like sitting there reading. You were reading, the audience <laughs> would reading, and then you'd have yeah. to, you'd want to say something, but you're interrupting the reading and it's automated. It it, it has like a, a good rhythm to it. Yes. Like the speed of the reading. It's, it doesn't feel You don't feel click like, through it. Yeah. You don't click through the speech bubbles, which means you're kind of just sitting there chilling reading, which is honestly great and there's so many great games that do that like Valhalla for example where you play as a bartender in a cyberpunk world mm -hmm. um, but it's not that fun to watch someone play it and also there's a lot of fun things you can do with the dialogue and choices that you can make and so I decided that maybe me and Nick will talk about it and if you're interested you can just play the demo I think it's only like an hour long 
and um, check it out for yourself. But obviously this is so you kind of get a feel for what the game is like. So we get kind of the game mechanic in the beginning of it where the main character, she's driving into the big city and she picks up this photographer and they have this conversation and it kind of turns out that the main character doesn't really doesn't like the company that does all the automotive cars and she can't help herself but to say something. Mm-hmm. And if you try to, like, pick dialogue options that are more non-confrontational, then she'll stop you from doing it. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it's... You never actually drive the cab. Right. It's it's a visual novel. Right. It gives you... I forgot di- to mention it that, gives, yeah. And I didn't realize that at first. And it wasn't really sold as that when we first saw this game years ago. <laughs> Do you remember when I walked in and I was like, well, I'll tell you later, and I left? That uh-huh. was what it was about. <laughs> yeah. It's, you don't drive the cab. You just are talking to this person in the back and you're trying to keep your star rating up like it's an episode of Black Mirror because if your star rating drops, you're not going to get anyone to want to pick you up. It's not an episode of Black Mirror. That's how the real world works. I've been yeah. like looking into a lot of side hustles and you don't make money if you don't have good star ratings and that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. Like We live in this time where you have to be rated by people who employ you and everyone else can see the ratings, and it'll depend whether or not you make enough money that month. And you have to be just so fake-friendly. Yeah. And it's weird because the photographer guy you pick up is happy that you're not a robot. Right. Like, he enjoys having, like, this back and forth with you, even if you have differing opinions. Right. Because he still has some humanity. And you picked him up after he was wandering around in the desert all day long taking pictures. Right. Right. And then he just finally gets to talk to someone again. Right. And it's nice for him. And he still likes you, even though you're kind of even like, you... I hate Capra. So you get to, or he is this photographer and he's making a lot of money by taking a picture of the corporate building of the guys who make the automated cars. And so your main character has an issue with that and she definitely brings it up. And it's kind of interesting to see them have this kind of awkward silence, but it ends up being okay because you you were honest with him and in this cyberpunk future it's harder for people to be honest which i think leads into the main mechanic of the game which is you get a bracelet from your friend uh that changes color depending on what your mood is so if you are acting nice but you're mad the bracelet or the necklace will show like a red color so people will know that you're pissed even though you're not emoting it necessarily Mm -hmm. and this whole game is set like from a dash cam basically Uh uh-huh every once in a while it'll switch to first person view when you're looking at your phone right but then it switches back to a dash cam so you can see the driver's face and the passenger's face and the little bit we play the passenger always sits in the same spot so it just has the same dynamic it's got the driver making like facial expressions the whole time and it kind of seems to wrap between like three of them right and then the person in the back and they're you're trying to kind of keep your star rating up but also be yourself and also make the passenger happy but not be miserable yourself it's it's weird i can't think of another game that i played where there are dialogue options and when you try to pick one it doesn't let you i think i've played a game that's done that before but i can't remember what it is so i'm gonna say it's it's pretty pretty rare rare. Yeah. yeah Usually it lets you role play whatever you want, but this game, it has a story that it's kind of guiding you towards, it feels like. It never felt out of character, the things that you'd say because of it. And we were talking about the mood bracelet that lets people know what your mood is. And my first reaction to it was like, why would anyone ever have this? And you were talking about how it's actually kind of a power play. You can tell if someone is being fake, basically. Right. And because her uh, roommate friend gave it to her, it's like, now I can tell if you are actually happy to see me or you're just lying about it and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you just want to know things about me that I want to keep private. The niceties and that surface that you put on for other people so that... You can live in harmony and have smooth interactions gets thwarted by this mood thing. And instead, you're 
bringing more attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. So other people are looking at you and like trying to understand why you're talking in a calm voice, but you're like all red, basically, you know? Yep. And her excuse is like, oh, now if it turns red when you have a cab uh, passenger, they can tell that you're mad and will lay off. But that's not how it's going to work. So, yeah, let's talk about the roommate. So the main plot is, is that the main character is going to live with a friend that she had. And the last time they really talked with each other, they had a huge fight. But the main character kind of has, I would say, romantic feelings. It's not explicit if they used to actually be girlfriends. Right. Or just good friends. It seemed to me that it's sort of like um, when... You're close with someone to the point where you feel like we're so close, like it obviously is going to turn to be romantic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the main character thinks is going to happen. So a big reason why, which is just so, so messy. Like, don't nope. don't ever do this in real life. But it's great for a video game. Right. So she's going to go move in with this girl who she, I think, has feelings for. And it turns out that this girl, her name is Savvy. Mm -hmm. She has a boyfriend and is not, not that interested. My issue is that I really hate the savvy character. And oh, I she's... don't know if that's intentional or not. I think it has to be. Yeah. Because you're the main character who's really just putting yourself out there. Yeah. And then Savvy's like, uh, just casually drop in that like, I gotta go to this club. I gotta go hang out with my guy. And she never says, like, my boyfriend. It's like, ah, oh, it's my guy. Like, big deal. I don't care. And she obviously doesn't care about him, really. Doesn't care <laughs> about you. And just, ugh. She's she like, seems really self-centered. Thanks for being my roommate. Now I don't have to pay for all the rent. Right. Is what it feels like. She seems, like, very, very self-centered. And the thing that, like, really bugged me is... At, so there's a part where you're like, oh, I'm going to drive you to your apartment or whatever. And Savvy's like... Yeah, can you actually park your car around the street? Because I don't want any of my neighbors to know I'm pro-car. It's just like, all right. Like, I just would never get along with someone like that. And so you're like, so you're anti-car? And she's like, it's not you. It's just my image. Right, she's very... It's not necessarily like what she actually believes. She's clearly doing all of these things for her job. And she's just really, really annoying. And I really hope that the game isn't trying to be like, let's have this epic love story with this girl. Because it's like, I don't like her. I, I There's a one part where she's like, oh, I have to go to this rich neighborhood and I have to make up with a client because he got mad about something. And I'm like, oh, that chick's going to die. Like, that's a good way to die, is, like, go check out some <laughs> rich guy's flat and hang out with him while he plays Huey Lewis in the news and then attacks you with a chainsaw. Like, so I'm curious if that's what's going to happen, if she's going to die. But I really hope that the game isn't trying to force me into romancing her because I'm just not interested. I think she's super annoying. One of the interesting things about this is the main character is coming from a smaller town right. to be a cabbie in this new big town. And since it's kind of like a, seems like a nationwide Uber type of thing where you yeah. can just pick up, she just picks up a dude on the way to bring him into the city because she's already heading there. Right. And so it really works out for her. And she has all, this is when she first moving to the town. Right. So she has all of her baggage in the trunk. Right. And so she's coming to this new city with literal and figurative baggage. <laughs> and it's immediately clear that it's going to be a bad time for her. Yeah, I think it, it must be intentional to have this character be unlikable. Um, but maybe perhaps they thought that she was going to be a, a likable character that had some issues that you'd be happy to work out with her. Because, I mean, that's how it works in, like, Mystic Messenger. Each one of the guys have their, like, issues. But you like their personality, so it's okay. But I don't like Savvy's personality. No. I think she sucks. <laughs> and all of her issues are not things she thinks are wrong or bad. Right. So she's going to just stick with them and that's that. Yeah. So I'm curious what they're planning on doing with the story. Um, but overall, I, I really love the art. It's kind of cell shaded a little bit. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. I like the idea of doing kind of commentary on Uber 
in automated cars since we're really on the brink of that right now. And by having the really close up uh, portraits, it lets yes. you, it lets them do a lot of expression with the faces, even though it's animated yeah. and like a cartoon. Because they don't have to worry about much else. Well, I was saying that I really liked how it reminded me of what they wanted to do with Eleanor, but they didn't quite have the technology for it, so it came mm-hmm. off kind of weird. I like it. And it, it's, it'd be neat to see where it goes. Yeah. But if it turns out that you're just supposed to like help this girl with her problems, I'm not going to play this game. No, me either. No. I really don't like Savvy, and I hope that it's not really about her. Or she dies. <laughs> I, wanted to, I want her to come to this big city, realize that she doesn't need this other girl, and uh, come to terms with how terrible the world is now. Yeah. Like, even though you're the only human cabbie. Yeah. Um, still find, like, a your niche. Find there your are thing. people who are into it. Yeah, like the photographer guy, and he shows right off the bat that, like, not everybody wants entirely automation. Right. Some people just want some interaction. Right. So, it looks like a fun game. I'm a little... I think the story might be a little sketchy, but we'll see. Uh, But I really think it's an innovative idea. And I really love the idea of adding in the mood ring gimmick. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of a new thing that someone's tried. Yeah. And it's... We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, thanks for chatting with me about this game. And... Yeah, I'll just, I guess we're just going to drive now. 